Look at that one glass shop. It's got everything. It's just beautiful in here. Make sure I can take pictures. Oh, I love bases. And uh, they're 38 euros a piece, the base. These glasses. These are 20. I think I like the green the best. Oh, the blue's pretty too. Oh, and black and white. Mm. We need to take one home with me, but I didn't bring any money with me today. I forgot. They probably look kind of out of place anyway. And they're probably expensive. This one's cute. It's 268 euros. Whatever that cost goes to. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Man and his family and his dog. Oh, that's a grandfather car. Somewhere now, you know. There's a whole wall. Oh, this is cute. This is 420. Looks like I sell knives, too. German eyes. Oh, That's all about them. They're in German. Oh, and then it's in English below. Oh, those are cute. It'd be nice to have for Christmas. They're only 30 euros. <laughs> oh, these are you burn the candles and the, and the paddles burn. No, those are cute. There's some little. Wood <laughs> carvings. 
and active in the black forest. Back on the bus, ready to head home, or back to the ship. The man out there holding the paddle is our, our guide. That paddle says 34D on the other side, so people know what bus to get on. We're going to get started just a little bit later because we're missing two guests. They might have got on the wrong bus. We're leaving now. That surprises me. It's white. There's no reason. Carl Bear's people in there. That's Tom. It was someone I didn't recognize. It was a troll. Oh, yeah. I tried with him. And then the sheriff's there. Oh, because he's, you know, he's always there. So I almost did a trade with him. Because he thinks I don't think so. He's doing his job. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bus party. Of that time, and he achieved this feat by incorporating many hairpin bends or loops into his design, no fewer than six tunnels in the Hurlental, and some of those tunnels are helical in design. They spiral upwards inside the mountain, not unlike a bind. In so doing, he was able to maintain a low constant gradient by artificially lengthening the line. Now this railway line on the right hand side, the Hurlental Barn, is the main reason why Freiburg, the large city we'll be driving through a little bit later, was the target of a carpet bombing raid, codenamed Tigerfish, towards the end of World War II. Now we had a, a bird's eye perspective over Freiburg earlier, I pointed out to you from the top of the in mountain. Germany. As the war progressed, Allied forces had American and French units advancing across the Lavorge, making their way to Germany, or the River Rhine, and were concerned that the Germans could mobilize up to seven divisions within two weeks and transport them from their eastern front across the Black Forest mountain range using this railway line into France. And so they chose Freiburg. It was nothing more than a minor railway center at the time. <laughs> but considered strategically important uh, to disrupt the potential transport of troops. We are approaching the narrowest part of the Hurlental, this gorge-like crossing. It was originally only 9 meters or 30 feet wide, but it has since been widened by blasting activities. It is called Hirschsprung, or deer's jump. According to a local folklore, a red deer stag leaped across the full breadth of the Hurlental after being pursued by a party of hunters. And to commemorate that folklore and the narrowest part of the Scorch Light Crossing, they have erected a sculpture of a red deer stag cast in bronze <coughs> above the cliff on the left-hand side, directly opposite the entrance to this tunnel. You can see it now for those who are on the left side of the bus. Oh, that red deer stag standing proud above the cliff. <laughs> marking Hirschsprung or deer's jump. mind I'll share the story of that carpet bombing raid on Freiburg with you. It was Monday evening the 27th of November 1944. It was dark and cold outside, the windows were shut closed, families had just finished eating dinner, the children were helping their parents clean the table when suddenly they heard the sound of thunder rumbling on the outskirts of the city. The sound grew louder as it rolled towards them, gripping them in fear and confusion. The sirens were strangely quiet on this evening, but then screamed above the ceiling of the city, confirming their worst nightmare. Mothers frantically grabbed children by the arms, fathers shepherded the grandparents, and entire families scurried down their staircases, seeking refuge in their cellars. It was at 19.58 in the evening. Twenty long minutes later, at 18 past eight, the last aircraft of the Royal Air Force Bomber Command's number one group flew over Freiburg, banked toward the northeast, northeast for its return flight back to Great Britain, stared down and saw an entire city engulfed in flames. The RAF had flown three waves of aircraft, including 300 Lancaster bombers. The 
deafening sound produced by the propeller driven engines hummed above the ceiling of the city like a swarm of killer bees dropping 3,002 explosives and 11,523 incendiary bombs. The shock waves could be felt in villages over 10 kilometers or six miles away as hinged doors shook violently within their frames. Incendiary bombs were precursor to napalm. They were enriched with phosphorus and oxygen, weapons designed to start fires and often combined with explosives. <coughs> the explosives would blow out the doors and windows so that the air could rush in, fueling the fire into an uncontrollable rage. The RAF had missed most of their railway targets, but the inner medieval city of Freiburg was in ruins. With one exception, the famous Gothic cathedral dating back to 1200 was still standing. It had received only minor damage. The roof was untiled by the blast waves of the bombs detonating and demolishing almost every other building immediately surrounding the cathedral square. I'm going to pass back a black and white photograph taken over Freiburg, including the cathedral lying at the city center. Have a look at that, you'll notice the signature open stone lattice were expired, it was the first of its kind. And we'll get a brief glimpse of that um, this afternoon as we drive through Freiburg, it'll pass by on our right hand. or 36 miles long uh, through that mountain range. It forms part of a Swiss federal project and in creating Foster Railway links north and south of that rugged mountain range. Passenger trains will travel at speeds up to 240 kilometers or 160 miles an hour, reducing travel time between Zurich and Milan by as much as 60 minutes.